that is a dolphin conlang spoken by the internet's most popular linguistics channel, except for maybe Tom Scott, and it sucks! That's right, Adam, we do got beef, and unlike dolphins, we also have vocal cords, so here is my chance to set things straight. Welcome to Terra Macra, a post-apocalyptic scenario where various animal species have taken up the torch of language. Today, it's the dolphins of Hute Wute. As humans continue to overfish and spill oil into the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea, dolphins need to band together to find prey. After the cataclysm which destroys humanity, dolphins innovate their brand new language, Wute Hute. I don't need to get into Spec Evo because dolphins already have some amount of access to language, but their mouths are very much different. Or should I say lack? thereof. I probably shouldn't. Dolph they have mouths, they just don't use them for language. Let me start over. Here's the empty space in your head. You have two main entryways, the nose and the mouth. The mouth contains the tongue and teeth, and the nose extends upwards into the sinuses. The two cavities are separated, first by the hard palate, the soft palate, and finally the uvula. They extend into the throat or pharynx, which splits into the trachea and esophagus, which extend to the stomach and lungs, irrespectively. On the way to the trachea, you have vocal cords. When you speak, these vibrate, and consonants and different vowels are articulated by what you're doing in your mouth. Now, the uvula is quite curious because no other animals have it. One theory of its evolution is in order to support speech. The other is to separate the air and food holes, allowing infant humans to breathe while breastfeeding. This is certainly the one dolphins went with. While in humans, the pharynx resembles a tube that splits at both ends, the dolphin pharynx resembles two separate tubes. And the nose, or blowhole, is the one used to breathe, and therefore to speak. That means you can't really determine what phonemes are possible using human methods, because everything there is based on landmarks present in the human mouth. So let's rotate 90, 270 degrees and pretend the nose is a mouth. A dolphin's nasal cavity is more complex than a human's, but still less than the human mouth. It contains these two fellows, the phonic lips, or monkey lips, and that's basically it. That's all they have to work with. Pretty much everything else here is to boost acoustics. Well, that's not entirely true. Dolphins live underwater, so needing to breathe to communicate would be pretty wasteful. They have to force air around without actually letting it out. Funnily enough, the lungs don't really care to inhale air, they just exhaled, so instead of using the lungs, they force it back and forth over the phonic lips between the air sacs. Now, right now, it's not entirely clear what exactly dolphins do with the phonic lips to produce sound, but we know it comes in two varieties, clicks and whistles. In humans, how would we speak this? I say we, but let's be honest, nobody except me will ever speak this. Well, here's my best approximation. The first phonic lip is represented by the alveolar ridge with the click <laughs> and whistle <laughs> Obviously, they don't have a larynx, so these would both be de-voiced, but I'm voicing it for the sake of audibility. The second phonic lip is and so that potentially gives us four phonemes. Realistically, these are represented as ejectives because it's air being pushed from the first air sac to the second. However, that opens the door for the ingressives, air being pushed from the second back to the first. That would be and, of course, now, that leaves a distinct issue that humans cannot produce an ingressive equivalent to ra, but no matter, I can simply choose examples that don't involve this phoneme. Now, dolphins would not be entirely limited to these eight phonemes. There are a number of different phonemic paraphernalia dolphins use. For one thing, pitch or tonality. But I'm definitely not adding tonality to wute hute. It's hard enough to pronounce these words, and if it's not voiced, there's no way I'm going to be able to make noticeable tones. I'm just a man. And what is a man? What has he got? If not himself... Then what has he got? But John Cage is quoted as saying, The material of music is sound and silence. And last I checked, he's the guy who does the splits to punch you in the nuts, so I decided to add a ninth phony. Nothing. And let's clear up the transliteration. Now, we're ready to move on to sentence structure, or lack thereof. Dolphins, unlike humans, don't have periods. More to the point, if all you're doing is pushing air around inside your mouth, you don't necessarily need to pause for breath. And right now, dolphins already don't really have conversations, per se. They just sort of broadcast a signal and maybe wait for a response. So, let's lay out the parts of speech, as it were. Nouns. A person, place, or heck, even a thing, which represent different declension paradigms in Wute Hute, therefore separated into animate nouns and inanimate nouns. What makes the animate nouns special is that they can be tagged for causality. In other words, they can serve as the subject of a statement. Besides default and genitive, the nouns don't really have any other cases. The thing I've decided to make there an absurd amount of is verb moods. In addition to declining for the causal tag used for the subject, the mood defaults to imperative, and then we have indicative, subjunctive, evidential, strong, evidential, weak, and parative. 
adjective, which is the only way you can make an inanimate the subject. Adjectives don't exist, only participles of verbs. Here's the colors. Note that this is just an example for English. Dolphins cannot see colors. Now, instead of just saying words, let's actually compose a sentence. Something appropriately dolphiny might be the geopolitical quagmire that is the Middle East is complex and fraught with opinions. Now, the word for geopolitical is the past passive participle of geopoliticize to render something related to geopolitics. This is two words. The verb to render something related to an inanimate noun. This is... <clears throat> The word for geopolitics is, of course, a loan word, which is rendered as zapwurz in the native chavories, but in wute hute. So the word for geopoliticize is But remember, we need the word for geopolitical. So the past passive participle, which creates an adjective to refer to something that has been geopoliticized, is formed by appending to the verb. That leaves the inanimate subject, quagmire, giggity giggity, that's right, and in lieu of a better idea, I'm just gonna use that as the actual word. Now, like I said, inanimate nouns can only serve as the subject of a noun in the parative mood, which also has some weird baggage attached to it. This is fine because the action is to be. Now, the subject has to have a causality tag attaching it to the verb, defining it as the thing performing the action or co-performing an imperative statement. There are six different pairs of causality tags, one of which prefixes the noun and the other the verb. <clears throat> At the language's inception, they didn't have any specific meaning, but nowadays each one is used for a different set of verbs. The associative tag is used for most instances of to be, both the noun and verb have this appended to the front of them. The verb is put in the parative mood by inserting two periods of silence in between the final and second to last syllable. Now, it's worth noting that said quagmire is both the Middle East and complex and fraught with opinions. This is no problem, because they don't really follow the same rule of one verb, one subject, one object. You can basically mesh together as many as you like, and they don't have a word for and. So, middle is an adjective, present passive participle of to align. I should probably drop the passive because they're all passive, the active participles are way, way, way more complicated. So it's something that is currently being aligned. To align is and the present passive ending is east as a noun is in English, complex is a synonym of complicated, which is already a past participle. To complicate is with a participle ending. Now, fraught with opinions is a bit more difficult to translate. The participle is to fill or to load, and grammatically it is still a verb, which has to be tagged with the opinion being its cause. Now, opinions aren't animate, so they can't be causes, but opinionated people can be. The shorthand for opinionated people is and the verb is with the participle ending. Together, these use a different version of causality. For this case, it's the partitive causality tag appended to the start of both words. So, altogether, that is...